Every two years, the hardcore of the German audio industry descend on Tommeister Tagung. In contrast to others in the annual trade show calendar, Tommeister feels unique. Unhindered by chaotic appointment schedules and kilometres of aisles, attendees can really get down to business. Here's a little taste of what Cologne had to offer. Welcome you at the Tonmeister Tagung in Cologne. Uh, we met several Tonmeisters here, which are very interesting in our high quality products. And some of those uh, working since many years with stage tech equipment. And uh, we're presenting them the news that we made for the consoles and the Nexus routing system. So we were happy to be here and uh, we continue. Hey, how are you doing? This is Sebastian from Session Desk. We're here at Tonmeister Tagung 2016. Um, we're here for the first time and it's, uh, it's amazing and uh, we like it. And we're here with uh, our product, it's a furniture. In fact, it's a modular studio furniture, which is uh, acoustically optimized. And um, yeah, here's a little model and I can show you what it's all about. So the main idea actually is that you even if you start with a solo, which is the smallest version which we have, you can easily just buy some new parts and add it up to a duo or a trio or a trapeze without throwing away any of your stuff. Welcome to the Tonmeister Tagung in uh, Germany. Uh, this year it's the first time we appear here in Germany as uh, directly KV2 Audio Deutschland. So it's the first occasion for us to present uh, and to work directly with our German customers. Uh, and it's the first time that we uh, present to the professional uh, customer that are here at this exhibition with the uh, ESR series um, and the ESD series and the EX series, which is uh, uh, our um, dedicated line for uh, for the installation market. Welcome to Tormeister 2016 here at Lavo, and what we are showing here is, for example, the latest version of our Kick software application, Kick 2.0, and that's an automated mix for the kick sound in, for example, a football production or in a basketball game. And it's using the tracking data from the tracking system and generates an automated kick mix out of it. And in version two, we have automized microphone stands, which you see right here. So these microphones move automatically according to the action on the field and the mixing algorithm is also following it. Check it out, thank you. All right, here we are at a new radio product by Lavo. It's called Relay and basically this is a complete radio station in a bag. Therefore it's called Radio in the Bag. So what used to be dedicated hardware units, like a rack of 19-inch units, this is all virtualized in here in form of plugins. So basically, what you would need to carry for your complete radio station is this audio interface, including some processing, and the touchscreen-based software application doing the mix. And in here, you can also have your telephone codecs as virtualized versions. You can have your processing in here, basically everything. Check it out, it's fantastic. With the show spread across three levels this year, there was plenty to see. From listening tests on the top level, down to an all-encompassing seminar programme in the main lecture theatre, Tom Meister offers a little bit of everything for the modern sound engineer, be it broadcast, recording or live sound related. I am Matthias Domke, the general manager of the company Microtech Gefell, and I want to introduce our new product. It's a professional reporter microphone. The name is SRM100. It is a dynamic microphone with an omnidirectional polar pattern with a very low wind noise level and a very low uh, handling noise level. Uh, it's for professional use. Um, with um, reports and it, uh, it has an integrated 
analog to digital converter. So it can connect it directly to a smartphone, to a tablet, to a notebook or anything else. And with such devices, it's possible to record voices or stream it directly to the broadcast station. Thank you. Welcome to the Shep's booth. We're at the Tonmeister Tagung 2016, and I think it's the 29th Tonmeister Tagung. My name is Hans, and I'm with Shep's since six years, and I can present you the new uh, mini CMIT, which you can see here. So it's the newest member of the whole CMIT series. So we have now three different models in the CMIT series. So the mini is the smallest, it's the new one. Um, the CMIT 5U you see here, it's the very uh, famous blue one. It's called the blue all over Hollywood, so it's very well known for good film sound. A lot of s sound engineers use this on set for recording. Then you see here the Super CMIT, you can recognize it with a second capsule. The knobs are in the back because we have a new, new hold, the new 063 from Cinella here. But this is the, the digital model. It's also now on the market for a few years and it's well known also for professional film productions because you have this very nice digital features of beamforming and diffuse sound reduction. But let's, but let's talk about the Mini right now. The Mini um, is basically the same condenser interference tube with all three CMIT microphones, so there's no difference in sound whether you use the CMIT-5U or the Mini CMIT, so they are interchangeable directly. Um, what is new with the Mini CMIT is that um, we don't have any switches anymore, so the, there's a fixed lo low cut at 70 hertz, with, which is fourth, fourth order. The other cool thing is we have less um, power. So the Mini CMIT draws half of the power of the CMIT 5U, which is very handy if you're using transmitters and battery-driven equipment. Um, the current consumption is just 2.4, 2.5 milliamps, so which is nearly half of the CMIT 5U, which draws 4.5, 4 so it's 2 milliamps less. Gives you a lot more battery life. Hello everybody here uh, from Cologne. We are at the Tonmeister Tagung 2016. My name is David. We are here at the booth from Klingenfreitag, Germany. And we present some nice things this year here. First of all, the new KNF D series slimline amplifiers, and on the other hand, our well, let's say our most interesting product, the Vida. What is this is a virtual intelligent steerable line array system. Um, yes, that's what we like to show here. Yeah, thanks. Hi, I'm Lars from Genelec here at the Tornmeister Tagung in uh, Köln, or Cologne, as we say in English. Uh, at the Genelec uh, demo room, we are focusing our efforts on the 8351, the, the coaxial three-way system that we are featuring, together with the uh, uh, two-way systems in the 8300 series, the 8330 and the 8340. Um, we like to come to Tornmeister Tagung, and we have been coming to Tornmeister Tagung for many, many years. And uh, because this is kind of the center for pro audio in Germany, you get all the Tornmeisters, all the professional people working with sound and recording in this country. And uh, we are so far having a good show. This is the first day, normally quiet in the morning, taking off in the afternoon. So, enjoy. Yeah, hello. Uh, my name is Jochen Frohn. I'm the Business Development Director of L Acoustics, and today I'm going to tell you the story about Kiva 2. Um, Kiva 2, we see it here, is um, still having the same beautiful um, appearance of Kiva, the product before. Kiva was, is about a decade old now. And there was a couple of things that we could manage to change with Kiva 2. So as I said, dimensions identical to Kiva, but apart from that, everything has changed. Uh, we are using new transducers that are available in the market today. 
uh, based on neodymium magnets, two six and a half inches and one point seven five inch uh, high frequency driver. Obviously, the weight of these components is a lot lower than the weight of the older components. But on the other hand side, we have also changed the composite material because in the last decade there have been a lot of advantages in composite material. So this material is a lot more stiff, has better acoustic uh, capabilities and is a lot more shock resistant. Kiva 2 as a result <coughs> is giving us a bigger bandwidth so it goes lower down to 70 Hertz and as a result Kiva has an output that's uh, Kiva 2 has an output that's 60 B higher than Kiva. What else has changed uh, in terms of rigging? We uh, do have a yellow dot now as indicator that the rigging is actually latched or closed. So it's visible now that we didn't have that before. Rigging accessories are identical to Kiva with exception of a new kibu, um, a new kiet, a small frame that can now take up to three Kivas and it can be used in both uh, directions. So as we have it here, Kiva on top of kiet or in a, in a rigging position for under balcony speakers, for example, the other way around. And again, it can hold up to three units now. That's the news about Kiva 2. Thank you very much.